fine. I'm very busy these days. There's so much going on in our industry, even though, you know, like people don't realize, but the gold price is at a record high. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on, but it, it's not showing up in the ETF. It's not showing up in the stock price, but it's a good time for the industry. Well, let's, that's exactly my, my, my point, because with portfolio managers so focused on tech stocks, on bonds and whatnot, it just seems to me that despite the amazing gold price we're at, where's the interest in gold, Pierre? Uh, it's not there. It, it is not in America. It is in China and it is in India. If you look at the disparity between, for example, the gold ETF, which has been draining gold, okay, like, you know, we've, we've had over 100 tons of gold disappear from the gold ETF over the last 12 months. And yet, why is the gold price like at a record high? Well, it's because mm. China in particular and India, uh, you know, the central banks, those, those central banks last year bought 1,200 tons of gold. That is one third of all the gold produced every year. And the uh, sensibility of gold is it goes up 30 to $40 for every 100 tons. So you just do the math. The central banks of China and India in particular, China in particular, have moved the gold price by over $300 just by themselves. So it doesn't matter what the American public is thinking, what they're doing, where the gold price is being set today, it's not in America, it's in China. But does it matter, okay, you mentioned the ETFs and the Bitcoin versus gold debate has been renewed. It's on fire again. Uh, you know, I saw a headline on Zero Hedge. Bitcoin tops one trillion as gold ETFs dumped in favor of crypto. To give some context, since the advent of the Bitcoin ETFs, gold ETFs have an aggregate seen almost two billion in net outflows, while Bitcoin ETFs have seen net inflows of almost four billion. Now, I know you say this doesn't matter, but at one point, does it become a problem it's not there my view is that there are two different markets the uh, people that are investing in the gold market are totally different than the people who are investing in the uh, uh, crypto and the crypto market is a very narrow market like very very narrow it doesn't take much to move that market because it's like 90 percent controlled by just a very few people it would be like having a stock that is 90% owned by five individual, well, they can control the price. And crypto is very much in that um, way. So totally different. Uh, the, the gold market is such a, you know, just the amount of gold that exists today on the planet is over 15 trillion. But to give you an idea of the relative importance of the gold market, the, the magnificent six, okay, the six largest tech company in the world by themselves have a market cap of 12.5 trillion, which is absolutely mind boggling. And it also goes to the performance of the S&P 500, for example, it's all driven by the magnificent six, because if you remove their performance, everything else is actually last year was down. And the only way you would have been a winner is if you're part of the index, because the Magnificent Six did 54%. It, it's a very, very disparate market. The gold market, you know, right now there's no interest. You look at the, the, uh, the uh, value that you can get in the gold stock. It's incredible. I mean, you know, they're trading at like a five yield, like utilities. It does. And yet, when you look at the contango, the, you know, you have a contango today, which is if you sell gold five years from now, you get a higher price than you get today. So you can assure yourself of a profit. And that contango is like, you know, three to four percent, which is quite incredible. We're back to where we were in the late 90s, where you have like a very high contango and that the value of your reserve in the ground should be the same as the value of your net asset value. And yet none of that, they're not even trading at net asset value. They're trading as if gold was going to be like $1,500 tomorrow morning. So yes, there is an incredible opportunity right now for gold stocks. 
and I want to talk a little bit more about gold stocks, but getting back to how China and India get it versus North American investors, I mean, uh, besides, the, is it just mostly a cultural aspect that they've been always believers in gold? I mean, why, why do they get it and not North American investors? Um, it's uh, two, two things. One, it is cultural. Uh, gold has been part of uh, the, uh, their economies for literally like, you know, thousands of years. Uh, but two, it's also being promoted by their own government as a diversification outside the U.S. dollars. Uh, if you look yeah. at uh, the Bank of China, for example, they've been laying off their, uh, their T-bills. Uh, they they used to have like trillions of dollars of T bills. Now they're they're down by like thirty percent. And where does that money going? In part into gold. They're diversifying their gold, their reserve, their in you know out of the dollar into gold. And uh, we're seeing that in many other central banks where they want to have a differentiation. They they don't want to be beholden to the the U S because they've realized that the U.S. can block all their financial system, you know, in one stroke of a pen. And they're saying, you know what, we gold, you can trade, you know, like there's always going to be a buyer and uh, it's not attached to the U.S. So it's a way to diversify your currency, your reserve, and that's what they're doing. And, and to your point, because... Part of your thesis of why you're a believer in gold, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you say the U.S. dollar has peaked and gold for you is really the anti, anti, anti dollar. Yep. Can you explain? Yeah, I mean. Why is I, it the anti dollar? You, you've heard me say it so many times on your show, Daniela, the gold is the anti dollar. When the dollar function as the reserve currency that it is, you don't need gold. You know, um, gold is an insurance policy. It's there when the dollar doesn't work, when you've got, you know, high inflation, you've got dislocation in government uh, in the U.S., uh, you've got incredible, you know, trade deficit. And we saw that in the 70s. And, you know, what did gold do? It went from $35 all the way to $800 in a period of literally like, you know, less than 10 years. And... It's interesting because today we have the same conditions, but the dollar has become Tina. There is no alternative. And uh, so when you've got massive amount of money, where are you going to go? Well, you go back to the dollar because, you know, the euro is a bit of a suspect currency. It's not really a one country. It's a whole bunch of countries that have different agenda, different laws, and et cetera. You got the yen, which is a manipulated currency. The, the, the central banks that decide, okay, we're going to be so much against the dollar and they keep it there. And it's been managed for like the last 40 years. And then where else are you going to go? And uh, so gold is really the only other place where you're going to go. And when I look at the, the current dollar, um, it's overvalued, it, way, way overvalued. Only in one place, it's in... Switzerland. Switzerland, you know, if you go there, a bowl of soup, I, I was there a week ago, a bowl of, two bowls of soup, two beers and a coffee was a hundred dollars. Okay. It's, it's like unbelievable. But the, the dollar yes. is way, when you look at China, they, uh, China, Vietnam, all of the Asian country, they undervalue their currency vis-a-vis -vis the dollar uh, because they're, you know, trade mercenaries. And uh, at some point, there's going to have to be an adjustment. And at that point, the, the dollar is not going to fulfill its role. Look at the budget deficit in the U.S. It's in the trillions of dollars. How long can you go? And at some point, there's, and then you look at, you know, the, the Congress is not working. I mean, the, the House of Republicans is not working. There's a complete dislocation of government. At some point, it's going to impact the dollar and who's going to be the net beneficiary gold for sure.